they, there you have it. Right, so today we're making the Ivy Fairy. Comes in our box. This one's already open. It's actually quite hard once they're open to close them again because they're so fully stuck with fibers. But they are a nice size and they fit through a letter box. And um, the postage, therefore, is also um, relatively uh, cheap in comparison to a small parcel. So let's have a look what's inside. So in all of our boxes, whether it's a fairy box or any other subscription box, you get a little... A5 leaflet in there and this one also uh, um, describes to you what's up in our what you, what you can get in our sub club um, discount um, club basically which is only available for subscribers and you get 20% off and included in the sub club this month are the multi-tone tops, all glue in eyes, all felting needles, white sparkly stuff and the large peacock butterfly pack. It changes every month, so there'll be something else in February. And there's the Ivy Fairy. You get your instructions in there from beginning to end. So that is um, with, with very detailed um, picture, step-by-step -step pictures, and then also the writing. I'm going to leave that out because I'm going to follow my own instructions as I'm notorious for not following them and just making things up as I go. You always get in your fairy box, you get, um, you now get um, the eco wool mat, like a little mat, you have to take that label off, you don't need that. And um, I'm actually planning on finding out what people do with these um, mats when you get, when you end up having hundreds of them. You get one fine felting needle, that's all required for the um, fairy. Get all this lush fiber in there. Um, and as I said, there's lots there. And um, chocolate usually get a little chocolate in there and um, and then you have some accessories often and uh, on this occasion these are the, the uh, leaves that you may have spotted on the on the um, swing swing wreath that um, the fairy is um, sitting on I love these because they're very delicate and um, they're lucite leaves and they will um, they literally they, you can sew them onto the loop which um, I might not be able to do today because it's quite time consuming but I can show you certainly what the finished loop looks like if you do have time at home to do this. You get two wires in there, one to make the fairy and one for the loop. So the loop wire I'm going to put to one side for now. The fairy wire I'm keeping out. I'm going to close this box and put it back here for display. And um, I don't know if anybody needs to see this fairy a little bit closer. I'm taking her off the little hook she's hanging on. There you go. Have a closer up look at the fairy. She's She has got, um, this time, we have used white wool to make her face and her hands. We've never had a white um, a white colored fairy. So I thought as it's, a, a, as it's winter and there's not much sun, um, you know, she, she can have um, a very pale complexion. And um, she has got um, um, bamboo fiber wings, which are really easy to make, but really lovely, um, look really lovely. And uh, she is actually using some of the multi-tone tops, but I want to get cracking now, otherwise I'm going to run out of time. And I bet you she's going to swing the other way now and show you her back. They always do that. They're always very unfriendly when I hung up fairies. Right, let's go on the overhead uh, view scene and let's start at the beginning of the instructions. If you have not never seen our instructions, you might not know that we have a tape measure here on the left hand side. That um, um, so if you need to, you know, if you need to measure something, you don't have a, um, a ruler or a tape measure in centimeters, don't worry, it's right here for you. And um, before I start, I'm just gonna remind you of today's price again. Here you go. And I think some of you are already busy commenting, so I will um, pop into the comments in a minute. Right, so first of all, you um, take your longer wire and some of the um, white bats which are here. This is our mouse white Australian Merino. It's really super soft. It's really great to felt a smooth surface, which is why we love it for fairies and for mice. Um, I'm going to the overhead view scene so you can see. So I'm going to wrap the end of the wire with a very thin layer of wool. 
and then I'm going to bend the end in so that now I'm trapping this wool um, and it can't slip off again and now I'm building bulk to build the can you see how I'm pulling the wool tight every time I go around? The other thing that you will see me doing is that I am not moving my hand because I don't want the wool to slip down the wire. That's a quite a good, useful tip for you to follow when you're making your little um, heads of fairies so that you stop it from moving along. And then when it's sort of built up like that, then you're going to take your fine felting needle and you're going to stab into the into the shape that you've just wound up. This is not the finished size, so I do this in two stages, two or three stages even. And I'm leaving the wire long at the moment, just so you can sort of see it jiggling around, but you don't have to do that. The measurements for the hands and the, um, sorry, the arms and the legs, they're in the instructions, so you can actually cut it short already if you wish. You don't have to keep it long. Um, and once you've felted that down, then you're going to start layering up another layer. Now the head is going to be about two and a half centimeters in diameter. So remember, you've got the tape measure on your um, on your instructions. Okay. The main thing is that you keep the wool flat and nice and tight. So that will help you definitely when you're felting it down. You don't have to, um, you don't you don't have to do too much stabbing. The wool's already quite nice and snug around that top of the wire, and um, that will definitely help. There we go. So if um, any of you are joining me on Thursday evening um, on a, on our um, cooperation with the Butterfly Conservation. Um, charity, then um, you will have had hopefully your Zoom invitation sent to you already after you have bought your butterfly pack. And it's the Red Admiral that we're doing um, together during the Zoom. You can still buy that butterfly um, pack. There was a slight glitch on the um, website for the butterfly conservation. I'll show you that site in a minute. I'll show you the thumbnail in a minute so you can see the details. Um, because they you couldn't people couldn't buy it so we've just let people know again it's life again and you can still buy the butterfly you can also still buy the large blue and um, I don't know about you but I can't wait to see butterflies again they're such magical colorful creatures not not um, actually I should also say I do love moths as well so um, and um, that leads me on to talking about the making um, fairy folk book which has got lots of um, needle felted fairies in there but also um, a moth and a butterfly fairy and at some point I will um, show you how to do these here on YouTube on the live stream as well. I think we've got something planned um, potentially in March so that would be nice to show you how to do um, a butterfly fairy because we're also doing a butterfly fairy at some point as our Yes, in April, actually. So maybe we leave it until April. Right. I'm going to felt that head down a bit better now. While I'm felting that down, I'm actually going to have a look on um, on the uh, comments here what favourite winter activity people have got and why. My favourite winter activity is walking through the park on a bright, crisp, sunny day when you get home with a pink nose and rosy cheeks. Oh, I like that. I love it when... Um, you've got like a cold face, but everything else is toasty and warm. Um, oh my goodness, Lona started to clear the garden. Maybe that's your favorite winter activity, starting to clear the garden ready for spring. Um, Diane says, my favorite winter activity is wrapping up warm and walking outside on the frost covered ground. Absolutely. I'm totally with you on that one. Um, Morning from um, Wisconsin, says um, Joey, in the US, of course, where the sun hasn't even risen yet. Gosh, you're um, still, I don't know how many hours behind um, at that part of the US. But obviously, I would have thought maybe six hours if the sun hasn't risen at least. 
Um, Denise says, cuddling up on the sofa with my dogs. Oh, I like that too. That's a good winter activity, especially when the weather is um, too gruesome to go outside. Um, living here at the wilderness in uh, the forest of Dean, um, we live quite high up and sometimes we don't, we don't get out of the clouds all day. And so it's either that we don't get out of the clouds so we can't see anything or when we look down in the valley, they haven't got out of the clouds and we can't still see anything other than the sky and um, obviously what's right in front of our noses. So yes, definitely been one of those winters, I would say more than the sunny, crisp um, winter, saying that the last few days have been absolutely lovely. And the sunrises and the sunsets. I did actually see the first full moon last night in a pink and uh, blue sky. So beautiful. I took photos. Um, I think I might have posted it on my Facebook page. I can't remember now. Um, right, so um, six Celsius this morning in Florida, says Susan. Right now, my favorite winter activity is drinking tea by the fire whilst watching Steffi. Oh, thank you. Um, my favorite winter activity, says Laura, is going to our local park on my scooter with my friends, with my friend Jess. Here we drink hot chocolate and play with Pat the dogs. I've just finished my hot chocolate. I'm hoping that I can make it to the end of the live stream because it was a mega big glass and I fear I might have to race to the loo after this. Uh, Meg says my favorite winter activity is making soup and stews. Nice. I had some soup today as well. <laughs> Obviously, we're all talking about the same thing. Um, Melanie says I hate being cold. So my favorite winter activity is staying home and keeping warm while eating cake and felting. <laughs> I hope you're not eating the felting. Um, Diane says, not seen the maker's mice for ages. Perhaps they're hibernating. Well, actually, the, the, the Christmas mice have been um, in the sale and they've gone before we even realized they were sold. But we do have um, the, the mouse kit and we are working on our spring and summer, um, um, what do you call them? Um, ah, kits. That's the word. And um, I'm, I'm working on a new mouse as well, so that'd be exciting. Right, I have got a little snowball here sitting on top of my wire, which is going to be the head for the fairy, and I'm going to go to the overview camera and work some more on that now. So I felted this down quite neatly with my fine needle, which you can do, get it quite a smooth and a nice surface. And now um, I'm going to cut off a 15 centimeter length from the end of the wire, Oh gosh, I haven't got my flipping. Um, I've only got scissors here again. I have been using the um, the wire cutters on the dragon that I've been making for the retreat and also on um, the hippo, which I've been making. So anyway, there's 50, 15 centimeters. I could have also used um, this um, little tape measure here on the left. And um, now I'm going to um, wrap the end as before with the white wool, but this time I'm really keeping it fine because I want to have a dainty little white hand. So really getting the wool nice and tight, thin cover, bend it over, cover it um, a little bit more. I don't have to go up the whole arm because the arm is actually gonna be um, covered in the green. So I'm just gonna go up a little bit to secure the hand here. And then I'm going to do this on the other side as well. So that's nice and tight. You shouldn't have to needle felt this at all. You should just be able to cover it really tightly and the wool will st stay on. Um, and repeat this on the other side. Bend it over. We're using our flexible steel wire. I've sort of gone away from the pipe cleaners a little bit because these fairies are a little bit dainter daintier than the ones that we have um, started out with when we first started the fairy boxes. And this wire allows you to make much thinner arms and legs. Um, and, um, and therefore the fairies are also a little bit smaller. And then you're going to use the olive green, take a wisp of that, and now you're going to um, wrap the rest of the arm, not the hand obviously, so make sure you don't get any green wool on there wrap this along the arm to the middle, but you're going to leave a little bit of the middle uncovered because um, that's just how this is done. So you can go back on yourself again. Get it super, super well covered. Oh, I'm not making a good job of this. 
there. One arm and then the other side. So I'm teasing the wool to make it nice and thin. And my, the wrap is never very wide either. Um, it's always better to do lots and lots of wraps than having to maybe just do one or two with doing lots and small of small wraps. And I'm obviously turning um, the whole work around so I can twist the, the, the wire in my hands. That way you get a much um, more solid wrap onto your shape. There you go. And now I've got a set of arms here with a little bit of wire exposed in the middle. And that I'm going to wrap around the main body pipe cleaner, uh, sorry, wire even, making sure that the arms are the same length. So I've now got my head and my arms at the ready. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got to now measure um, about 18 centimeters for the legs. So I'm just going to do that here. I'm using really old tatty scissors, so don't don't freak out. They're not my best fabric scissors. And um, I'm using the same green wool, but this time I'm not covering the ends because she needs little brown shoes. I'm just covering the wire, leaving the ends exposed by about, um, does it say by how much? By 0.5 centimeters, so half a centimeter leave them um, uncovered. This is, goes so much faster because you can literally just whiz across the other side. There. So I'm allowing the wool to run through my thumb and index finger whilst I'm twisting it with the other hand and it's going across and whenever I feel it's getting a bit thick I tease the wool apart and make sure that it's nicely and tightly wrapped. Going all the way across to the other side. Here we are. And so now I've got a little bit that I need to cover here. So what I'm doing is I'm turning it um, around again because I need to add another layer, but I need to do it so that I know the direction of where I've wrapped before. If you add another layer over the top and it's going against the direction of the layer below, you're unwrapping the layer you've just made. So it's best to just turn it round again or make sure that you remember which direction you have um, started wrapping and, um, and continue in that same direction. Right, so now I've got a set of legs with a little bit of wire on each side poking out and now I'm going to use the um, dark brown wool which incidentally is also used for the hair, just take um, a length off you can see that I'm teasing it off lengthways so that I get the fibers running in one direction. And now I'm going to wrap the end with that brown wool, nice and tight, like I did with the hands, basically. So ignoring that there's green wool already on there, bending the end in like I did with the hands, and now I'm working my way up the leg a little bit for the shoe or boot, whichever way you want to look at it. And once I've done this, I can bend the little foot in a little bit and now I've got, my fairy has got a little um, foot on one side and now I'm going to do the other side. That's never going to be enough. Bend it in the same way. Start wrapping, but I need a little bit more. A tiny bit. Going over the work again covering up that bent over wire and then working my way up the shaft of the boot if you like making sure that they roughly look the same so you don't want one boot ginormously big and the other one tiny it's always the challenge with anything where you have to do one and then the other that they look the same so now you've got a set of feet here and a set of legs even um, so you've got your I've bent it in half and all I'm doing now is, and this is sort of a useful tip, is I'm going to fasten this to the lower part of the fairy and this gap between the top of the legs and the bottom of the head needs to be about the same size as the head itself. And um, so if you ever want to make up your own fairies, just uh, bear that in mind. And now I'm going one way round the top of the legs and then the other way 
so that it's um, fastened really well. And then the rest of the wire, I'm just going to twist around the body. If you've got pliers, use them. I've got fingers of steel, so I usually use my fingers. Now, when you look at it that way, it always looks like the legs are out of proportion, but trust me, it will all come exactly right. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is um, cover the body with that same green wool. And um, I'll show you how to do this, and then um, I will have a look at um, the comments again, and maybe see what's coming up next. So round the body, that will now secure, um, will hold the arms in place. And um, you can also go around the top of the arms. So that's all happening. You will be going around the top of the legs as well. So this is all um, so that you secure the arms and legs to the fairy, but at the same time, you're also building up bulk around the body. And um, one, once you get similar to the head, when you get to a, um, a point where you can felt it down, then felt it down and you can bend the arms out of the way. This flexible steel wire is another reason why we're using this now because the, the extra strong pipe cleaners, they are really strong pipe cleaners in that they are quite, um, they hold a lot of wool on there before they sort of flop but they are not great for bending back and forth consistently. So you do, with, with this flexible steel wire, it has got a lot more um, bendability, if that makes sense. It's a new word, bendability. And then you wrap the wool around the fairy's legs, in and out, weave it in and out, a bit like a nappy. Felt it down. Oh hit the wire there so be careful not to hit the wire hit the wire too often you're gonna bend and then probably break your needle this one's just a little bit bent now so I might actually go to another needle felt this down you, sh you don't really don't need more than um, this little felting mat even even though there's quite a bit of felting for this fairy just take felt that down on both sides so now you have got um, a body built up, and I will um, will add another layer over the top as well. But as I did say I was going to look at some of the comments, so I'm going to do that whilst I am um, I'm working away here, adding another layer, and you can do the same at home if you're making along. Um, so um, my favourite winter activity is a walk with the dogs, followed by a hot chocolate. Says Alison, sounds nice. Um, oh, so Diane says she had the invitation for the butterflies. That's good because I think there were some people who hadn't received it, but we weren't quite sure why. I certainly had mine, um, so that's good. So I will be there, <laughs> which is probably just as well. Um, so what else? I have um, I've got my packs as Annette. Really looking forward um, to it. Do you say Annette or do you say Annette? I don't know. In German, I would say Annette with um, pronouncing the E, but in, in um, English and French, you would probably say Annette or Annette. I don't know. Um, Donna says, drinking hot tea early here. Um, and um, Diane says, cannot wait for your new book, says Steffi. Great. My favourite uh, winter activity, says Karen, is being round the fire pit in our garden with friends, drinking mulled wine and eating fire cooked food. That sounds really nice. My only problem with that is that the initial going out and being cold, I don't like that until you get warm by the fire. It's that like where I think, oh, I'd just rather be cozied up on the sofa. I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a hot, hot um, room and weather person, I will be honest. Um, Yes, I have got, um, we've got snowdrop flowers appearing in the garden, Jane. Um, yeah, they're popping their heads up, definitely. Right, so Fairy is now um, covered with uh, a good layer of wool around the body. She's still got long legs, which is fine. And um, it's better to have two long legs than two short legs. Um, that's what, what I've found. It's coming a little bit undone, so I might just have to stab in there. You can stab into the um, thinly wrapped parts. You just have to do it very gently and then preferably along the wire because all you're doing is you're just stabbing it out at the other end again. So then you have to go over that part again. Right. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give um, her a skirt. And uh, for this, I take small pinches of the same green wool and felt onto the fairy's waist. You will need to do this with several pinches and work your way around the fairy. So this is still the green wool that I've got here. Go overhead um, so you can have a look while I'm doing it. So I'm just laying, um, it's a small pinch. If you're not, if it's too sh too long, then just shorten it and lay them on top of each other. You, you can um, make them what you want them to be. You don't have to just take one pinch and think, oh, that's it now. You can definitely manipulate the size and the, um, the thickness and definitely push those arms out of the way. Felt these pinches on and you're going to do this several times around the body. And I'm already sort of keeping them quite short lengthen them again by tucking at them and making them longer. So the um, the bit that you're felting on on the upper body will just blend into the shape and into um, your um, in, into the wool that you've put on there earlier. Stop it down. The other charity event that we've all haven't shown you that um, so let's talk about the butterfly conservation first. So this is this is happening this Thursday. I know it's a bit late probably to get your pack in time. You might just be lucky because it's a large letter first class that we're posting it. Uh, you have to buy this from the butterfly conservation site. So you can't do this directly from our website. And then um, we are posting it out. So just have a look at that for a minute. And um, I will be back in the... And then the next thing that we have got coming up is the Liver Trust. The British Liver Tr Trust, we are supporting... Oh, no, it's not there. Oh, okay. I uh, Somebody's obviously moved um, the files around. And um, anyway, I will find it again for the next live stream. But I can tell you what you're doing. You can buy a, your little pack and make a little bear. And um, you can either have um, a maroon-coloured bear or a gold-coloured bear and um, each of them will have a heart um, in the colors of their, their little decorations. So that um, is a needle felting project that where we are raising funds for the British Liver Trust and you can get your um, pack directly from them too. And no doubt Alicia will be putting the uh, links into the, um, into the comments here as well. And I do apologize that that slipped away, but that is on the 3rd of February at 6.30. And um, I think that's a Facebook event, so you can watch this on Facebook. Whereas the Butterfly Conservation is our second time we're working with them, is on Zoom. And um, for both events, there will be a link available. So even if you can't watch live, don't worry. You can um, watch it or catch up with uh, the link. So while I'm chatting, I've given my fairy a little... Um, green skirt. I can see that she's a little bit bare on the side here still, so I'm actually going to add another patch onto there. Um, I should also tell you, if you're a first-time watcher and you don't know this, first of all, our competitions here are completely um, random picks, so we don't we don't go by, oh, we like this answer the best. It's a, it's a number-generated um, picking. Um, Alicia is doing this, and then we'll just, we will just announce the winner um, via the live stream on a Tuesday on on um, YouTube I can do it in person because you're all here and it's all happening um, as I'm here on Thursday where another two people can win themselves a 15 pound gift voucher that will happen obviously um, with Alicia announcing it in the comments so and the other thing I should say is that if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet then please do so and also give us the thumbs up um, on our live streams as well. We've had quite a lot of people saying, oh, I'm not into fairies. It's really funny because I'm not really into fairies either. I know that sounds really bizarre coming from me. I'm into fair into my fairies. That's what I'm into. I, I'm not really into fairies per se because they're just such a different type of um, of different fairies that are out there. I love what I love about these fairies is just, um, first of all, the things that you can learn, what 
wool and other fibers are useful for. And they are almost sort of a personalization. So it's it's almost like you, you can put quite a lot of yourself into the fairies. So if you, I think once you've done a fairy, you know what I'm talking about. But they all turn out really different. And mine are always, I don't think mine are ever that like really pretty pretty. They're always a little bit sort of boyish. And um, I quite like that. But I've seen fairies that are so pretty and so lovely. And I've just been told that the replay, because of the clash with the butterfly conservation, Zoom is now on Wednesday evening at seven. So, don't don't um, find us on on um, Thursday at seven. Find us or, or us on Wednesday at seven on our Facebook page. Right here's the little fairy, and now this is a new thing that we haven't done before, where you have to um, needle felt individual leaves on your little felting mat. For this, you've got this beautiful Australian merino top. It's super soft and it's got a multi green. Um, colors running through it and all you're going to do is you're going to just take off little wisps of wool it's about five to six centimeters long you can sort of lay them on top of each other and then you lay this flat on your felting mat and fold over so that the wispy ends are now on top of each other so you're literally folding it in half like this hold on to the wispy ends and then you're just stabbing into the other end to make an impression of an ivy leaf. I know it's not like an ivy leaf, okay? So, um, and when you felt anything flat on your mat, you're gonna have to lift it off regularly. You can felt it from the other side as well. So you are actually making not super solid shapes, but you're definitely making um, a semi-felted shape. It's almost like a pre-felted shape, like that. And the wispy ends you're keeping wispy and you make about five or six of them so I'm just going to churn them out got my piece here it's a bit thicker <coughs> Felt that down sorry i've got cough them. Felt this down. And turn it over and then you're going to repeat this for another four times. There we go. Right, I'm going to show you one more time on the overhead camera. I just love if you look at ivy leaves, they actually have this this whole range of colors in them, and um, this this multi green top is perfect for for making um, the ivy fairy. Just just enough dark green in there and enough light green in there to give sort of the whole shade of the green that you find in ivy leaves. And sometimes there's even a bit of yellow in there, so that very light green covers that almost as well. And then turn that over. So this is all you're doing with your fine felting needle onto the little um, felting mats that come in your fairy kit. And um, that's all you need for that. These felting mats, incidentally, they are fully compostable, so you can actually put them into your home compost. Um, and you can also um, obviously keep them. And then at some point, we do want to know what you're doing with them. There will be some kind of um, question coming your way um, so watch out for it and get your thinking hat on already and I'm just going to do a couple more and then I'm going to have a look um, at any more of the comments um, Kimberly says my favorite winter activity is drinking a hot drink tea coffee hot chocolate doesn't matter which curled up by the fire or with a blanket needle felting oh that sounds really lovely what what does everybody um, think to this stuff that's been out there about you know how open fires or wood burners and so on how they how they've be, they they're really um environmentally unfriendly and then if you buy the stuff that's actually okay to burn it is so expensive how do people cope with this because we don't have an open fire at the moment but my my um children always say how much they miss the wood burner 
Um, and I, then I always sort of tell myself, oh, but at least we're not burning anything that goes into the atmosphere. Um, but I, you know, obviously it sounds lovely when people sit in front of a fire and um, we can't at the moment. So I'm, I am a little bit envious. What, um, how, how do you all do this? Do you just buy this extra super expensive stuff to burn or not? Um, I like the idea, Donna. What about um, a fairy mouse or a mouse fairy? I do like the idea, we'll be honest. I, I definitely want to make a mouse um, and, and make it a little bit more sort of with features. So that's a really nice idea, a little mouse maybe with a tutu skirt or something like that. That sounds lovely. Um, my favourite activity is to stay warm, says Catherine. Although if it is a nice crisp day to go for a walk and then into the warm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love that too. And what else? Mm. Oh, Rose says it's cold in Massachusetts. I bet it is. Um, I can't. I think I had a friend who lived in Massachusetts, and you definitely get like proper winters with skiing and all the rest of it. So, very envious about this. There's nothing. I love snow. I love it because it's clean. <laughs> makes your shoes clean. Makes everything clean. Keeps the dogs clean, and and so on. So the next thing I'm going to do is because I think I've skipped. Um, I've skipped the step, is I'm going to um, felt the fairy underneath where the skirt is um, to fasten on the, um, the wool a little bit better underneath her skirt. So I'm just stabbing into the wool, I fasten on from the top and now I'm fastening it on underneath as well. This is just to make it a little bit more sturdy but also it kicks it out to the sides a bit more. So it's not so flat hanging down, it just gives it a bit more of a um, like a petticoat look, which is exactly where we're going with this in a minute, you'll see. So I'm not felting it closed or anything like this, I'm just felting it on a little bit more. So um, when you now push it down, it looks a little bit more like it's sticking out to all sides. So now I've got my, um, I've actually made four, sorry, five of these leaves. Um, you can make up to six, or you can make more. And you're now going to felt these skirt petals, so to speak, onto the fairy, stabbing the wispy ends into, uh, so felt the leaves one by one onto the fairy's waist, on top of the puffy underskirt, by stabbing into the wispy pointy end of the leaf. So this is the bit that you haven't felted, and you're literally just stabbing that on. So she has, she has like an under, underskirt, and then she, now she has the top skirt which is the um, the actual sort of little ivy shaped, ivy leaf shaped leaves. And then you do this all around and they can overlap obviously. So if you feel now we should have done an extra one then you can still do that. I've got absolutely loads of that green um, multi-tone top left. This is by the way one of the ones that is on special offer if you're a subscriber in the sub club. So um, there are many of those multi-tone tops. We're using them on the lovebirds as well, but that particular color where we haven't listed yet. Though I, um, as a tip, I can tell you if you get go for the uh, rainbow one that has got a good range of um, colors in there to do lovebirds as well. If you need to stock up on some more wool, and I definitely should have done an extra one, shouldn't I? Right, might have to make an extra one. Felt that on here. I'm going to make an extra one. No way. Sometimes cutting corners is not advisable. You can always try and get away with it, but sometimes you can't. Just make an extra one quickly. The next live stream is coming up next Tuesday. Let's have a look at those. Um, we have got coming up the um, on Tuesday the 25th of January the primroses. I'm really looking forward to those. They're, they're the, the simplest simplest project ever. It's almost like I have a bit of a imposter syndrome when, when I do simple projects like this. But it's not about the simplicity of the project. It's more about how you display it and how you put them together. 
Um, so you can make lots of them. It is definitely a stash buster. You don't need to buy anything new for that. All you need are sort of reds, pinks, purple colours, the colours of primroses basically, and some water soluble paper, which most of you have probably got now in your stash. And, um, and that's all you need really um, to make these a little primrose flowers. It's a project from the Making Needle Felted, um, no, Making Simple Needle Felt books. So um, there, it's already featured in there, but I will um, give you some tips of how to display them to make this beautiful plant pot. Just bring, bring the flowers in the house if they're not growing in the garden yet, make your own. And primroses won't be far behind anyway. Right, so now I've got my my fairy here with her skirt it's get it's very bulky and very sticky out and what you're doing now is you're going to tuck these wispy bit, bits sort of in so that it becomes more puffy so I'm holding my fairy upside down with her legs sticking up in the air and I'm um, felting into the green fibers so that they become not flattened but they become a bit more condensed under underneath her. Now I'm very wary because I know my hand is right below there so I'm not stabbing ouch very deep even though I did just stab myself. Um, so make sure that you um, don't suffer severe injuries doing this and um, and that gives it like a real sort of little a very nicely shaped skirt where it almost looks like a like a toadstool. Um, and you have the, the leaves, the, um, the, the skirt leaves right at the top there. And she looks nice from the top as well. She can do a little twirl. And um, all that we need to do now is give her her hair, which I'm going to do straight away now because I have got the brown wool here to give her hair. So take a pinch of the brown wool bats and lay over the top of the fairy's head. And again, I want this to be so that the fibers are running in, in that direction lengthwise. Put it on there she looks very wild when you do that and all you're doing is you're just stabbing this into onto the head as if she's got like a middle parting so go all the way from the front of the head along the top and then down the back get it fastened on even though they're sticking out like a very wild looking pippy long stocking there, like she looks really wild like that. Like this is actually what like one of my daughters, she's got hair like that. And then you um you gently felt the wool down on the sides and the back too. So you just need to felt this into the side of the head. But we're doing this a little bit more all over rather than in sort of a concentrated line. Obviously, do that at the back and the sides. Do this on both sides. I mean, there's not, you can make your own hairstyle if you if you think she looks absolutely amazing with this really big hair, then do so. I've got all my children have got really really curly hair and um, and really beautiful thick curly hair as well. Um, one of my my oldest daughter she had her hair cut the other day and this is the first time this happened because they have such thick hair. The hairdresser she said I'm just gonna straighten your hair. It's easier to cut it. She came back and she looked deeply unhappy and I I literally didn't recognize her and I said that's absolutely horrible. <laughs> and she said yeah mom I know I'm gonna go and wash it now. It was so it, it, I think it was because I'm not used to seeing them with flattened hair, and um, it just definitely didn't suit her. I just needed her to have her lovely curls back so she went off and washed washed her hair. Okay, so what I've been doing is I've taken a little bit of the green wool top, I've chosen the bright coloured green um, part and I've tied the sides of the hair up into um, um, a pigtail and then you can cut this um, little tie shorter and do, then do the same on the other side. There we go. I do love making fairies. They're really it's very therapeutic to make them. I don't like the sort of like spooky fairies or like really extremely weird looking fairies. Um, I don't really know how to explain it any other way. They look really unnatural and and um, yeah, I don't know what don't like those. And then you've got um, her hair here. If you need to, you can add more brown wisps to, 
to her. This is sort of almost made accidentally a side parting, which I hadn't planned at all. And then we're going to the last, last page. Some of you like the fairies with faces, some of you don't. If you do like them with faces, then you just take a tiny bit of the brown that you've just used and you're going to give her really, really tiny eyes. So um, take a small amount of, um, of the wool and then just stab it into the head. The smaller the features, the more um, tasteful it will be. I mean, you know what I mean. Um, if you if you give them really big features, they can look a bit odd, so don't do that. And then at the second one, obviously on the same line, because that would look too that would look odd too if you, if it's completely like higher or lower. Felt it down as much as you can, and then you've got absolutely a humongous amount of um, of this pink here, flamingo mountain sheep of which you only need the tiniest amount so you can put that in your stash you can use that maybe for the primrose primroses and give her a tiny mouth in a similar way you did with the eyes i know some of you are really good with these little features and you take so much more care than i do right now i need to just shape her head here a little bit just stabbing more into the neck area and bring the hair down to the side a bit. So there's nothing um, nothing stopping you tweaking things um, once you've felt it, your little fairy. And she's got sort of a delicate little face there now with big eyes and um, her beautiful skirt. And she's pretty much ready now to um, sit on her swing which I haven't made yet, but I will show you how to make it. So the idea is when she's on her swing, the arms will stretch across and the hands will be exactly the right width for her to hold onto the, um, onto the hoop so that you don't need to do anything else. I really love her. She's definitely one of my favorite ones. Um, I always say that about all the fairies, but I think she's a really lovely sort of earthy, um, a solid fairy, just like ivy, um, as you imagine, it's an all year round green um, plant that, um, you know, adds a little bit of colour into even winter, even dreary winter days. And um, so I think she's a, she to me, she's a sturdy little fairy girl um, having fun on a swing in the winter when there's not much else to do. So I'm just going to have a quick look because I think we can probably draw the winner now. And then I just show you how to do the loop of um, our Alicia, by the way, she doesn't like faces on her fairies. So that's absolutely fine, each to their own. And um, and so, yeah. And um, oh, yes. So what's coming up on oh, no, I did tell you um, the frog prince is coming up as an as one of the next ones. He's um, he's really lovely. Actually, I've seen lots of you make them and it's one of those makes where I, I almost can't tell the part that um, I haven't made it. You know, a lot of makes, we all have our own take on it. But this one seems to be almost like lots of carbon copies of exactly the same. And I, I love it. Um, happy frog. Um, happy frog prince even. And maybe he's yours. Um, you can still buy the packs. We've got I think we've 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 made a second batch and I think we might have about I don't want to lie but I think we've got about 10 left so not a huge amount so but there's still time to get it if we're getting really low in stock we'll just make some more but we have been making lots so um it's going to be a good live stream no doubt um what else um got any other Oh, Alicia says so many Americans. Yeah, well, I wonder why, Alicia. You're attracting them all across from the big pond. Right, let's um, let's have a look at the um, the, the swing. So you've got um, um, the steel wire in your pack. It's the best wire if you want to maintain um, the shape of the wire. It is very inflexible. So it's very sturdy, and I, I, I it's a nightmare to use as a wire um, armature. So, sorry, I'm just listening to Alicia announcing the winner. And I don't want to miss it and get it wrong. But we have got 
Olga V, you've won yourself 15 pounds, and Jane V, you've won yourself a 15 pound voucher. So you can um, email us, drop us a, a line at info at the makers, and just tell us that you have been uh, drawn as the winner during our live stream on YouTube. And then we'll get in touch with you and tell you what you need to do to redeem your 15 pound voucher. Um, it's completely, it's literally just that. You can go onto our website and spend 15 pounds, basically, that's it. And then um, on Wednesday this time, not on Thursday, when we're repeating the live stream, there will be two more um, winners drawn on the live stream on, on Facebook at 7 p.m. Right, going back to the wire, now that we've done this. Um, so basically, what you have to do is, and here you probably need pliers, which I haven't got here done. Um, I didn't say that. I'm just going to use my sis sisters, scissors. You have to, um, oh no, I'm going to have to go and get the wires. Okay, what can I show you? Um, I'll show you something. Oh yes, let's talk about Sophie Wheatley. We have got um, a workshop that is coming up for uh, pet portraits or animal portraits. If you want to master 2D animal portraits, then this is the workshop for you. Um, absolutely no doubt. Book onto it by emailing us, info at themakers.co.uk. We've got spaces on both of them. So you're not too late, but I wouldn't wait too long. And that is a non-residential workshop. And we are um, we're basing this in Nelsworth, which is where we are, which, which was where we are based. So I've got to pull my leg back in. Um, so here's the loop, and I've got my, sister, my my pliers now as well. And all you're going to do is you you're putting um, a hook at the end of. At, at each each end, it's cotton covered. So if it comes, the cotton comes up. Don't worry too much about it. And you're just hooking that into each other. That's the best way to fasten them together. And then you can probably bend the um, this little hooks shut. Even I can't do this with my hands. It is so hard to bend this wire. So now you've got. Um, and, and if you were to use another type of wire, what will happen is that this even loop here, it will become sort of slightly bent. So if you use copper or aluminium, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Oh no, I should have uh, covered it first. See, this is the trouble for not reading the instructions. Anyway, I'm just going to unhook it for a minute. And now I'm using the leftover wool, green wool tops, and I'm going to uh, cover it. Exactly the same way as you covered the arms and legs of the fairy. It definitely works better if it's not hooked together. So um, if you have just hooked it up, sorry about this, just unhook it and cover it. Let's go around this. And what works really nice is when you get um, the other sort of colors of the green to come through and it makes it look slightly stripy. So grab a bit that has got a different color in there as well. You um, you will probably put about two um, covers on there, maybe one, depend how, how thick you want the loop to be. But it's just literally a going over and then letting the last wispy bits sort of melt into the wire. I'm actually using more and more a little bit of glue at times just to um, to make sure it doesn't come undone. As long as you don't you put it on the top, just put it like literally on the wire. So to cover it up, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if it helps, do it. There's no point having to suffer if you can make your life easier. Just use a little, a dab of, a, a tiny bit of glue will just make sure that the wool doesn't come undone. And keep going round and round all the way until you need to tear off another strand. Now there's still plenty of green wool tops left, so um, you will have some to put in your stash as well. I've got so much wool left, even off the white now. I'll show you in a minute. What, oh, I haven't put the wings on the fairy. I knew there was something missing. I'll do that in a minute as well. So now you've got your hoop covered. all the way to the other side. You can add another layer if you wish, if you want to make it slightly thicker. I'm going to leave it as it is for now. 
all the way. I'm gonna put back together. And now I've got to cover this unsightful looking part here as well. Use a bit more wool for this and cover that up as well. This is where the fairy is sitting on, so it won't be visible anyway because it will be slightly fatter that part where you covering this up now. But it, you won't see it because that's where the fairy is sitting on. Yeah. All gone. Nobody knows it's there. So um, Alicia just told me that there's a Zoom happening tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, just um, remind me, Alicia, is this to make the Ivy Fairy um, with Alicia? Alicia does um, Zooms on for, um, she organizes them herself, but she does it so that she, that everybody can make the makers boxes with her, all of, all of the three sub subscription boxes. Um, oh yes, Fairy Wings. So you've got this lovely bamboo fiber here. Now, it is a vegan fiber and I wouldn't necessarily felt with it to make a shape but what it is suitable for you can felt into it and so what you do is you just pinch the middle so if you if you have started your ivy fairy or you've got a taste for it now and you've got all the energy to do it but you haven't started yet then at 3 p.m. on everyone a maker that's our Facebook page um, you can see that we have um, a Zoom event coming up. Alicia is organizing this and you can get an, a Zoom um, invite sent directly to you and join Alicia um, and many others to, um, it's a social thing really, um, make your Ivy Fairy, get hints and tips, get help if you need to and, um, and just meet like-minded people. So once you've um, felted this down in the middle, you may want to adjust the wings a little bit so that they're the same and neaten them up and then all you're doing is you're literally just felting this at the back into the back of the fairy. It felt really well this bamboo fibre. Just felt right into that um, felted part that you've done earlier and there you go you've got some beautiful wings. Don't need to do much else to them and what you do need to do is you need to bend your fairy's legs like this and then forward as well maybe cross the legs looks a bit more ladylike let her sit on the hoop like this and then you can see that the arms are reaching to either side so you do need to bend her hands in and give it a, a t um, like make them fit so that they fit onto the hoop and then bend it on the other side as well now the good thing is that you can bend this sort of that it's more of a um, an oval hoop if the arms are too short to reach comfortably across um, a round hoop. So make it fit to where you need it to be. So she's holding on to that, that now and then all you need to do is use those um, little leaves that come in the box and sew them onto the side here. Need a needle and thread for that which we don't put into our kits. I've lost the leaves as well. Where have they gone? There. So you get five of these and you can just sew them onto the hoop and then you've got um, a twin set of fairies swinging. Well, I have a twin set of fairies, you don't, unless you get another box. I'm swinging on, on their ivy, ivy hoops and having, um, having a good time. Um, yeah, and it's put, definitely put a smile on my face doing this very So that's all from me today. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for watching and um, for supporting the makers. Um, if you haven't got your fairy um, kit yet, you can still get it. Some of the fairies we're keeping in the program, some of the fairies, they will just be turned into, into PDFs. And then, um, oh, there's some rubbish there. I didn't notice that. Sorry, guys. And... Um, and then um, you, you just buy the materials to do it. Talking about fairies, we have our fairy accessory boxes. Definitely pop onto our uh, website to have a look at the winter sales because they're now half price. The accessory box, the fairy bundle, 
um, with lots and lots of decorations and accessories so you can design your own fairies or decorate them even more. And um, that's all from me for now. And if I see you on Thursday, then I look forward to that. And otherwise, I will see you next week on Tuesday. And we are making the primroses. So take care, everybody. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for watching. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell all your friends. And um, we'll see you soon. Bye.